Hey there, nerds. Jimmy here with my ever reliable sidekick. Hey, James. What? I'm four, you're five. That's just the way it goes. I'm trying my best. Anywho, we are here to honor the recently deceased James Earl Jones. Um, super saddened to see him passing. Super happy that he was 93 and got to live a very long, prolific life, and that he got to share it with us with a lot of his films and performances. Most memorably to me, of course, Darth Vader. James, what are your thoughts? Uh, I feel like I've only seen a, a, a wee fraction of all the movies James Earl Jones has been in, like uh, Field of Dreams, Coming to America, uh, God, I'm blanket Star Wars, obviously, those are like the big three that come to mind, but... Oh, Lion King, of course. But anytime you don't, he doesn't even need to be on screen. You hear his voice and you know the king has arrived. And it is, his voice is just so unique and so powerful that I can't imagine a world without him as the characters he played because he just came. And he gave his voice or he was on screen and he just was these characters. And it's amazing to me, looking at his filmography, he clearly fought his way to the top. He started with soap operas, Guiding Light and As the World Turns. I, I did not know that. I was shocked. The first movie I knew he made was Dr. Strangelove. Um, not a major role. Just, a, just It was awesome to see him in that, know that he was in that. Um, but to see that he started very much on the small screen then at that time 1966 was able to transition to film uh he's very well known for the great white hope which is another classic film um but he popped up in so many movies as either a little cameo to add the gravitas like heretic 2 exorcist 2 the heretic i'm sorry that movie's horrible it's like <laughs> but just having him in it was like oh wow so he took the time out to do this um what i'm trying to think there was another one where it wasn't a big release but it was him and robert duvall and they turned out to be brothers and they were sort of both racist in their obviously own races and it was like they had to come together and 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 it was like wow what a powerful just sort of small story concept but two amazing actors working together to uh portray this it was awesome and then obviously feel the dreams oh man just every single time he speaks even if it's just well your finger was a gun like it's just like what's well, a dumb statement but it's just recounting what happened is like it's him he's like i wrote a story ray and it's like oh god right here and then you go to coming to america and he is <laughs> like he gives off dad energy and he doesn't even have to try it's it's perfect and even the, his exactly. minor cameo in the second one and I get it. The second one wasn't as good as the first one. But just having him in it again was cool. And he was fun. He, those That he's able to do the, these uber serious stuff, but then have fun. That's just the span of his talent as an actor. The other one that I, I forgot because he was not the major character, but his foil to um, Harrison Ford's uh, The Hunt for Red October and Patriot Games. Uh, Admiral Greer, he was so good. And again, how do you one up Harrison Ford, as far as an actor, as far as somebody on screen to be like his boss, James Earl Jones. That's how you do it. And it's like that works so beautifully. Yes. And of course, we have to give a special mention to the most iconic role James Earl Jones was able to be a part of Darth Vader. I love the story how he didn't want his name on the film he was just going to take i can't remember what it was nowadays like seven thousand dollars or something to do this voiceover it's like don't tell anybody i don't want it to be known it's me which is hilarious because like really we couldn't tell that from your voice i mean seriously <laughs> um but the fact that it blew up and he's like all right so that that discount i gave you on the first one now <laughs> before he passed he sold the rights to his voice to lucasfilm to be able to use for darth vader in perpetua so it's like awesome just he understood how important that was which goes to one of my other favorite james earl jones stories 
the first time you ever met Carrie Fisher had not well, it had something to do with Star Wars, but it wasn't anything to do with Star Wars. And then it was on the Big Bang Theory. And I'm like, I love that's how they got together in a comedy. Because those two, yes. I, I just believe were the biggest goofballs. Yes. And my favorite addendum to that story is that both Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher would always call him dad. And I thought that I think that's just so precious. Yeah. I he will be missed. Very thankful he got to live a long, uh, prolific life. Uh, we married Carrie, or we mentioned Carrie Fisher, and I, I feel like she kind of had the opposite, and that she her talent was cut short. Um, but to see James Earl Jones and everything that he accomplished, and to be able to go back and watch these films and remember him in these roles is just huge. And I, I'm very appreciative for everything he did. Yes, absolutely.